Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Be sure it's someone else's garbage before you take it as your own treasure. It's a bit of an heirloom and it is missing. A basketball hoop may not seem like much to you, but it was a gift to a local family from special people. Valley News Team's Melanie Palmer tells us what happened. I realize it's only a basketball hoop, but it did have an emotional connection for them too. Jody Hoyt and her two daughters are upset. Somebody took a basketball hoop that belonged to them. You can see where it was, and we had just finally moved it over to here because in the winter we could put it here and we kind of had it like chained up to the post. And what made this hoop so special, it was a gift from grandma and grandpa. And it was one of those things that like we all did, like us three, my mom, my sister and I, and then along with our grandparents, if they couldn't play, they'd at least grab a lawn chair and walk. You can see where the back was. They don't know if somebody stole it or with cleanup week just around the corner, if somebody thought it was up for grabs. It's always other people's garbage is someone else's treasure. The problem is, is if it's someone else's treasure and it never was garbage, You've just taken away someone else's treasure. But whoever got it had to put their back into it because Jody and her daughters took steps to make sure it wouldn't just go away. There was a 300 pound concrete weight on top of it. And now Jody has a warning to other people who keep important things outside around the time of cleanup week. This wasn't on the burn. It was obviously secured. If you are considering that, hey, maybe they're throwing that out, ask, ask somebody. In addition to this warning, they want it back. It may not seem like much with a cracked backboard and a dip where the concrete sat, but to this family, it was a way to spend time together. In Moorhead, Melanie Palmer, Valley News Live. Jody tells us her family had a similar experience in the past during cleanup week. She says her garbage bins were stolen a couple of years back. And again, this is not the first time this has happened to someone around the time of cleanup week. Randy Affield with the Moorhead Public Works Department says he's heard of cases like this before. We've had, uh, I know I heard of one time somebody had a lawnmower stolen, riding lawnmower, taken really? off their boulevard when they... So you have um, heard of this happening yep, before? Yep, it, it happens. Um, well, you, you, if, if you're a picker, you, you want to be the first one to the site and get, get the goods before anybody else gets there. Affield says the department does not condone anyone picking through things during cleanup week. He says to leave the cleanup to the Public Works Department. And as a reminder, a cleanup week does not start until May 7th. And if things are put out sooner, you could face a special sanitation charge. We were struggling to warm up today. A lot of stubborn clouds out there. Are they moving out tonight, Hutch, or sticking around? Oh, we still have a, a few clouds in the area, but it does look like we'll see some decreasing clouds into the evening. Some rainfall overnight left pretty narrow swaths of half inch to one inch rainfall reports between, say, Stutzman County and Grand Forks. Also, Lakes Country picking up a nice dose of rain. Fargo in the middle. And here's a look at the clouds that are lingering across the area. Some clearing out to the west will work its way in, but not until we get to the overnight hours. We have a cool air mass over us right now, and it looks like another chilly night ahead as the warm air has been suppressed well to the south in Fargo this evening. It looks like we will stay dry with temperatures slipping into the 40s for most of it. Light winds tonight will dip down into the 30s for lows. We'll have details on some warmer weather, though, as we go through the remainder of our work week here in just a few moments. Warm sounds good after today. It does. Yeah, thanks, Hutch. Yes. The Grand Forks Police Department has released surveillance pictures of two suspects in an armed robbery at the Canad Inns Hotel. If you recognize these people or have any other information, you can call police at 787-8000. An East Grand Forks man landed in jail after a bizarre situation that ended with him biting a police officer. Court documents say 50-year-old Chad Cresson was knocked off his bike in Mandan yesterday afternoon. When police arrived, they discovered Cresson was drunk and he was arrested for DUI. Cresson was then taken to the hospital for treatment where documents say he was threatening officers. Once he was released from the hospital, he bit an officer on the forearm. He has been charged with terrorizing, contact by bodily fluids or excrement, and DUI. His bond has been set at $2,500. There's new information tonight on the mysterious substance that caused a Cenex gas station to close in Monoman County yesterday. The substance that was found on a dollar bill has been ruled as non-toxic, a non-toxic carbohydrate powder. 
Sheriff Doug Creer says someone went into the store, bought something and paid for it in cash. After the employee handled the money, they started to feel a burning sensation on their hand. Uh, the employee that had, that had the, the powder on her um, is doing fine. She has no sensation or anything this morning. It was uh, just determined that she had an allergic reaction. No different than somebody who's got like a peanut allergy or a flower allergy or something like that. Seven employees have been treated and released from the hospital. Newly released documents reveal more details about criminal charges filed against Lois Reese, the Minnesota woman accused of killing her husband at home and another woman in Florida. According to an affidavit filed in Florida, investigators believe Reese tried to steal the identity of Pamela Hutchinson, the woman she is suspected of killing in Florida. The affidavit describes how Reese befriended Hutchinson while visiting Fort Myers Beach to scatter her husband's ashes on Sanibel Island. According to the affidavit, Hutchinson was seen in video surveillance walking to and from her hotel room with a woman identified as Reese. The statement goes on to say that Reese was seen making several trips to and from the room with loaded bags that day and the next morning. The documents also state that a hotel employee received a call the next day from a woman claiming to be Hutchinson asking to extend her stay. Reese was also seen driving her own SUV away, and it was recovered later a mile away, and then leaving at about 2 p.m. with a tote bag and a coat. A big haul for Moorhead officers on drug take-back day. They took in more than 135 pounds of unused medications. The officers were at the Walgreens off of 8th Street South in Moorhead this past Saturday for a few hours. It was, again, part of National Drug Take Back Day, which aims to keep medications out of the hands of abusers and prevent the meds from contaminating the earth. If you missed the event, you can drop off medications at the Moorhead Police Department drop box. Fargo City leaders are looking at a number of different options for the Main Avenue reconstruction project. Among the ideas, three lanes, four lanes, or five lanes running from University Drive East to Second Street. The cost is around $13 million, with an 80-10-10 split between federal, state, and city. Along with the design, planners are looking at the economic impact, traffic flow, street parking, and pedestrian safety. My concerns are largely around mobility, vehicle mobility, and the decision we make is for the next 20, 30, 40 years, not, you know, Three years down the road when this is completed, we have a new idea and we go back to the drawing board again. Engineers are hoping the city commission decides the next steps at their next meeting on June 18th. Construction will begin in April of next year. The May Day baskets you might have gotten when you were a kid have undergone a big change in the Fargo-Moorhead area, compliments of the United Way. Instead of peanuts, mints and other sorts of goodies, the United Way baskets have treats for the imagination. They are filled with books. Volunteers have been busy today preparing their special brand of May baskets and taking them to child care centers in the metro area, even taking time to read to the children, emphasizing how important learning to read and enjoying reading really is. So a child that reads on track by third grade is four times more likely to graduate from high school. So while the books are fun and it's a fun event, it really has a bigger meaning, uh, making sure that kids are ready for kindergarten and they're ready to take on school and life. This is the seventh year of the United Way's May Day Basket Deliveries with books promoting literacy. The revamped movie theater at the Mall of America is almost ready to seat customers. CMX Cinemas says the remodeled theater will offer 13 screens with cutting-edge audio technology and oversized reclining chairs. Instead of the traditional candy and popcorn, the theater will offer food market-style pizzas, burgers, and liquor. Tickets to movies will range from $8 to $14. There will also be $5 Tuesday deals. The new theater is expected to open May 4th. One Fargo salon is helping the environment along with treating customers' hair. Salon 3-5 by Ryan Benz recycles nearly everything that comes through its doors. For example, we're told recycled plastic and metal can be used to build playground equipment and the excess hair clippings can be used in nylon to clean up oil spills. For more on the salon and its eco-friendly practices, go to valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button for a link to their site.